We're with the Winkle, and today we're making a UFO, UFO spinner. spinner. Grant, have you ever seen a UFO before? No. <laughs> UFO stands for Unidentified Flying, Flying Object. Object. And usually what that means is people think it's an alien spacecraft of some sort. Anything unidentified could be a UFO, technically. But usually we think of a UFO and aliens, right? Okay, should we see what's in our kit today? Mm-hmm. Part of a yo-yo, a straw, four pieces of straw, glue, a button, a card, and a cup. Nice! On top of everything in our kit today, you'll need a pair of scissors and a pencil. And once you have that, let's get started. Yeah. Grant, can you believe we're actually going to make a UFO out of everything in our kit today? No. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? It's not actually going to take off and spin up in the air, but it will spin like a top on a, like a tabletop or your floor. Will this be the thing it's spinning on? Yep, that's exactly right. If at any time in any of our Winkle videos we get too far ahead of you, you can always pause the video and catch up to us. That's right. If you don't understand some of the instructions, you can always rewind the video and play it again. Okay, you're going to take your cup and try and find the middle as best you can. Maybe draw a spot first and see if you think that's the middle. Then you're gonna poke a hole in the middle and push your pencil all the way through. Nice. We're gonna be blowing the air through and that's gonna be giving thrust to our UFO. And thrust is something that we'll talk about in a little bit. Set your cup aside and now we're going to cut out our stencil. Okay, this stencil is made out of cardstock, which is a thicker paper, and I love the design on it. It's so spacey. Just cut it out the best that you can, right around that perimeter. Don't cut out the middle. The middle is just going to show us where to put the cup later. So all you need is the circle. While you have your scissors out, let's get those four pieces of straw that you have. Just the pieces. The long straw is going to be set aside, and you're going to trim those pieces of straw about a finger length away. If you're if you have little fingers, like if you're five or six, you might do two finger lengths from that bendy. You're going to bend all of these at a 90 degree angle. In math, this is what we call a 90 degree angle. So pull out that stretchy part and bend it. It's like a 90 degree angle is what you find in a square. So now we have all of our straws at a 90 degree angle. We're going to poke some holes in our cup. We're going to be poking four holes in our cup. Okay, so you're going to go about halfway between the top and the bottom of your cup. So right here. And if you want to, kind of draw a line as you're turning the cup, just very lightly, because this will help us make sure that all of our holes are lined up on the same line here. Then we're going to be doing four holes. So if you want, you can do like a cross through here. Grant already has a cross through his. And that will show you that you need to put a hole here, 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 and here. Does that make sense? So you have your line going perpendicular to the top and bottom of your cup and then your dots are lined up with the cross that you put through the top of your cup, and that'll give us four points for our holes. Now, uh, your holes do not need to be as big as this hole. This hole, we pushed our, our pencil all the way through. This hole, you're going to want to put your fingers behind where you're going to poke through, and you wanna make sure your pencil goes between your fingers, okay? You don't wanna poke your fingers. So your pencil, you're gonna kind of feel where that is and make sure you're, you open up your fingers so that your pencil doesn't poke you. How far and do we need to go in? That's a good question, Grant. You're gonna kind of jiggle your pencil and then see if your straw goes in there. If it doesn't go in, then you need to make a bigger hole. Okay, so that was pretty good. We're gonna do the other one. Is it supposed to stay in there without glue or? Yeah, it should be able to stay in there without glue. If you made the hole too big, you'll be able to glue these straw pieces in later. 
so that they stay in. Now I am putting my short pieces into the cup and leaving my long pieces out. We can always trim those long pieces if they're too long. Okay, so see here I put the trimmed part, the part that I trimmed on my straw into the cup, and then just, you don't need to push it quite up to that bendy part, just enough to where they kind of are looking at each other in the middle of the cup. That looks pretty good. Let's see yours, Grant. Good, let's get out our glue now. Take the lid off. Sometimes these glue um, bottles can get plugged up or stuck. So if it's plugged up and the glue doesn't come out easily, you can poke it with your pencil or you can give it a little trim with your scissors and the glue should be able to come right out. Now, if you have your holes a little too large in here, you can plug up the holes with some glue so that your um, straw pieces don't move. It also helps later with the science that we're gonna be talking about because you don't want any air to escape other than the air through the straws. So if you have any like cracks or holes or anything in your cup, it's not gonna spin properly because we're going to be pushing air through here and the air is gonna be coming out through these straws causing thrust, okay? So we wanna make sure to plug up those holes if you have them, if not, don't worry about it. Okay, now we're gonna take our yo-yo, putting glue right in the middle of your yo-yo, just a dot, and the middle is pretty easy to find because the spiral, and then you're gonna put your button right on top of that. This button is just a little bit convex, which is perfect for our project. What does convex mean? Convex, that means it has a slight curvature to it. Okay, so there's concave, like a bowl would be concave. You can put something in it. Convex is if it's rounded like this, like this button. That's gonna help our spinner spin better on the table. What do we do with this cardstock? Okay, the cardstock, you're ready to move on. The cardstock is going to show you exactly where to put that cup. So the cup should line up perfectly with this circle right here. So we're going to take the glue and just carefully squeeze it out along that line. We don't need a ton of glue, okay? Squeeze it out the best you can, trace that circle. Good, now we're going to put our cup right on that circle. Center it the best you can. Centering means there's going to be an equal space on all the sides. So off center would be if it's over here or over there, but centered means it's an equal space on all those sides. Now we're gonna take our yo-yo and turn it over and put some glue around the edges of that. Okay, you're gonna take your yo-yo and center it again. That word center is very important. When you have something that's spinning, it's very important to have everything centered so it doesn't wobble. If everything is centered, that means there's gonna be an equal space on all the sides of your circle. Make sure your button is in the center still. Centered, centered, centered. Does that look good? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, this is gonna have to dry for a little bit. What I'm gonna do is put a little tiny bead of glue around my, my yo-yo just to make sure it's gonna stay in place. It's nice and secure. You don't want a ton of glue, just a little bit there. And I'm also gonna put a little bit around my cup on the outside, just like that. Okay, so this part is all about the glue. I have, uh, I've attached my cup to my cardstock, and then I put a little bit of glue around the perimeter. That's optional if you want to make sure it's nice and secure. And on this side, I glued my top to my cardstock. I centered it, my button is glued to my top. I keep calling it a top, it's a yo-yo. I call it a top because and we're making a top, but it's actually a yo-yo. Gotta get that right. I wanna sure, make sure the straws are at a right angle. Okay, now this is the hardest part of this whole project, is now you have to wait. I know, we don't like waiting. Um, you might wanna wait by turning your uh, cup upside down, like this, on your table. Okay, that way as you're waiting, you can make sure that it's stay, everything is staying where it needs to be, everything is centered, how it needs to be centered. So now we wait, probably 20 to 30 minutes, which is a super long time when you're a kid, but go have a snack or go do your homework or something else, and then you can come back 
and then I will show you how to play with your UFO spinner. Okay guys, it's been 20 to 30 minutes and we are ready to use our UFO spinner. So you're going to take your straw that you have left, stretch it out and bend it. We're going to be blowing into that hole right there on the top of your cup. You're not going to put the straw into your hole. You're just going to be hovering above that hole and blowing. And we're going to see how this spinner spins. Ready? Brant, when you're blowing into the hole on the top of the cup, it forces air inside. So all that air inside the cup has to go somewhere, right? It can only hold so much air until it's forced to go out through the straw pieces all bent in the same direction. As the air rushes out of the cup, it creates a forward motion called thrust. Thrust is pushing force created by energy. Blowing gently or more strong will create more or less thrust. In a real rocket, thrust is created by force of burning rocket fuel that blasts from the rocket engines. As the engines blast down, a rocket goes up. We can create enough thrust by blowing to overcome the weight or gravity of our UFO, but making it spin is pretty cool though. Every time we're doing a Winkle project, it's very much, I give you the instructions, but you can try and play with it and see what works for you. His is working great. I found that I had to make my hole a little bit bigger in the top with my pencil. I just kind of, uh, widened it with my pencil a little more and then it worked perfectly. Also, if it's not spinning properly, maybe the glue didn't dry enough yet or maybe there's a hole in it somewhere and the air is escaping another area. So there's all those things you have to watch the video, double check that you did everything right and figure out how to make it work and work the best. Yep. Ready, Grant? One, two. I'm getting lightheaded. <laughs> You're doing awesome. All right, we had so much fun building these spinners with you today, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>